everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make this really fun Tunisian crochet blanket. So this is currently a free pattern on my blog and so you can find all the patterns notes and directions and extra photos at the link in the description box below. So this blanket is really fun, it's really easy and it's made only using one stitch which is the honeycomb stitch. So this stitch is made using the purl stitch and the simple stitch. So two very easy stitches in my opinion. And so I'm gonna be making a small swatch of the stitch used for this pattern, but I am gonna go over how many you need to actually chain for the blanket, okay? So some of the things that you're going to need to make this pattern is you're going to need a number six bulky weight yarn. I'm using Line Brand Respun Thick and Quick yarn. It's a 100% recycled polyester yarn, very similar to Line Brand Thick and Quick yarn, except it's just a bit thinner, but it's really nice and soft, and I think it has really great stitch definition. Okay, so um, for this tutorial, I'm using it in the color Whipped Cream. For the pattern, I used it in the color Night Sky. All right, and then you are going to need your Tunisian crochet hook. So this is a 12.0 millimeter Tunisian crochet hook, which is a size O, and you're also going to need an extension cord, a 32 inch extension cord you are going to need, or you can also just use a longer one. All right, so let's get into how to make this blanket. Okay, so if you're following along with the swatch, you want to chain 10, and if you want to go ahead and start the blanket, you want to chain 81. Okay, so first we're going to start off with a slip stitch. So to make a slip stitch, you just want to take this yarn and wrap it around twice, around your finger. Then you want to take this strand and push it over the other strand. Then take this one and push it over your finger. Okay, and then carefully tighten it by just pulling the shorter strand. Okay, then you want to grab your hook and go ahead and place it in that loop and then just tighten it. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and start a chain 10. So yarn over and pull through that first loop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so for Tunisian crochet, we actually have to work on the back side of our chain. Okay, so go ahead and flip your chain. And we are gonna skip this first stitch right here. And we're gonna work into the back bumps of all the little chains. Okay, so the easiest way to see a back pump is that it's gonna be right in the middle. Okay, that yarn is gonna be right in the middle. And you can also flip it to the side and it should be a little raised. Okay, so you wanna take your hook, and the first one can always be a little tricky. I just like to spread my chain apart just a little bit so I can get my hook underneath. Okay, and I just pull it right through. Then I yarn over and I pull through. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. All right, so let's go to our second back bump, which is right here. So we're gonna take our hook, pull it right underneath, yarn over and pull through. Okay, you should have three loops on your hook. All right, here's our next chain with our little back bump. And we're gonna do the exact same thing. And if you have to use your finger to get it underneath, that's absolutely fine. I do it a lot. <laughs> so, all right, let's take our hook and put it right underneath that back bump. All right, and just continue to do that until the end of the row. Okay, and so this is also known as our forward pass here. All right. Okay, looks like I have one more here. Okay, so your last one will look like this. All right, I'm going to use my fingers here again. So this looks like it's a little bit of a tighter chain since our it's our beginning one. All right, and then yarn over and pull through. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this. I did have to remove my extension cord just because it was making a bit much. Uh, I was making a lot of noise for this video. Okay, but it should look like this. 
Okay, so now we're gonna work our return pass. So for the return pass, you want to yarn over and pull through that first loop. Okay, and then when you yarn over for the second time, you're gonna pull through two loops. Okay, and then you wanna continue pulling through two loops. So yarn over and pull through two loops. All right, I'm almost here at my end. And it should look like this. Okay, so our return pass should look like this. All right, so now this is our standard way of starting a Tunisian crochet project pattern. And so now we're gonna start on our honeycomb stitch. Okay, so now for row two, we're gonna be working our honeycomb stitch, okay? And so the honeycomb stitch is made by alternating between a simple stitch and a purl stitch. So we will first start off with a simple stitch, then a purl, then a simple, then a purl, and you wanna keep on going till the end of the row. Okay, so to make a simple stitch, you wanna take your hook and go into that, not this stitch right here, but this one right here, and place it right underneath the first vertical bar. Okay, then you wanna yarn over and pull through. Okay, so it should look like this. Now we're gonna make a purl stitch. So for a purl stitch, you're gonna move your yarn forward. Okay, so not back like you would normally do, but forward. Insert this hook underneath the vertical bar. And then now you wanna move that yarn back, place your thumb right here so it holds that strand, and then pull it through. Okay, so it should look like this. Now we're gonna do a simple stitch. So take this hook, and place it right underneath the vertical bar, yarn over, pull through. All right, so now we make our purl stitch. So move the yarn forward, go underneath the vertical bar, then move the yarn back, place your thumb right here so the yarn doesn't move, and then go right underneath that loop, okay? And so now it's actually really easy to um, identify these stitches because the purl stitch is always going to be a bit slanted. Okay. And it actually looks very much like knitting. <laughs> so it's always going to be just a tad bit slanted. And then the simple stitch is just going to be straight. Okay. And so now you just want to continue alternating between those two stitches until the end of the row. So we finished off with the purl right here. So now we need to do a simple. Okay. So hook underneath the bar, yarn over, pull through. Now purl, yarn forward, insert hook, yarn back, place thumb, pull through. Okay, simple, yarn underneath the bar, yarn over, pull through. Okay, and then purl, yarn forward, underneath the vertical bar, push the yarn back, place thumb, and pull through. Okay, and so now we're here towards the end, and all we wanna do is place this hook underneath two strands of yarn, okay? And so this one can be a little tricky, especially at the beginning. So I do um, move my fingers like this till I have the, till I can see the two strands. So it should look like this. It's gonna be right in the middle of here, okay? And then you just wanna insert your hook through, yarn over, and pull through. Okay, so it should look like this. Okay, so this was just our forward pass. So now we have to do our return pass. So that's gonna be the exact same like we just did. So yarn over, pull through that first loop, yarn over, and pull through the next two loops. Okay, and then yarn over and then keep on pulling through two loops until you've reached the end. All right, so your row two should look like this now. Okay, you can slowly start to see those honeycomb stitches form. And so now we're gonna work on row three. Okay, so for row three, we are gonna be alternating again between a simple stitch and a purl stitch, except row three starts with a purl stitch first and then a simple stitch. Okay, so it's gonna be the exact same, just the order is different. Okay, so this is our first stitch that we have to work in because you always wanna skip this stitch. Okay, so it's gonna be a purl stitch. So you move the yarn forward, insert it into that vertical bar, 
then move the yarn back, place your thumb, and then pull it through. Okay, and so now we're going to make our simple stitch, which is right here, okay? And then just place your hook underneath that vertical stitch, and then pull through. Okay, so now we're going to do our purl stitch, so yarn forward underneath that vertical bar, place yarn back, place your thumb, and pull through. All right, now we make our simple, go underneath that vertical bar, yarn over, pull through. And now our purl, yarn forward, insert your hook, move yarn back, place your thumb right here, and then pull through. Okay? All right, so keep doing that till the end. So we're at our simple, yarn over, pull through, honeycomb, or the purl stitch, I mean. <laughs> All right, insert our hook and move yarn back and pull through and our simple will be our last one okay and so now we're making our tunisian last stitch so once again you just kind of have to feel for your fingers especially with bulky weight yarn i find okay and it's right there insert your hook yarn over and pull through all right so our little swatch here should look like this and see how you see these really cute little honeycomb stitches. I think they're just adorable. <laughs> All right. So now we are going to make our return pass. Okay. So yarn over, pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through the next two and keep on doing that till the end of the row. All right, so that completes row three. All right, so for the next row, which is row four through row 80, you wanna to continue to alternate between rows two and three. Okay, so since I'm making a swatch, I'm just going to stop right here and I'm gonna be showing you how to finish off the blanket because this is a Tunisian slip stitch. So it's kind of similar to regular crochet, except since we're making the honeycomb stitch, I'm just gonna show you how to complete the rest of the honeycomb stitch so you don't have a half a honeycomb, if that makes sense. All right, so here we go. Since I just started with a purl stitch for my row three, for my row four, I'm gonna start with a simple stitch. Okay, so I'm just gonna insert this hook into that first vertical bar. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through and just like a slip stitch, like a regular crochet, I'm gonna pull through that stitch, okay? So my first stitch is done and completed. All right, so now we have to make our purl stitch. So just yarn over, make sure you move your yarn forward, insert your hook, and then move your yarn back, thumb over and pull through, and then pull through one more time to create that second slip stitch, okay? So it should look like this. All right, so now our simple stitch. So insert your hook into that vertical bar, yarn over and pull through. Okay, and so that's what you're going to do until the end of the row, okay? And see how nice it finishes it off really nicely. All right, so our purl stitch. Okay, our simple. Purl stitch again and our simple and our purl all right and so now we're here at the end and so you just want to keep on doing what you've been doing so insert your hook into those two loops yarn over and pull through and then pull through one more time Okay, and so your little mini swatch or your blanket should look like this now. So all you want to do to finish off your blanket at this point is you want to cut your yarn, and I would say to leave about a six inch tail end. Okay, and then you want to yarn over and then pull through, and that should create a knot, and then you just have to weave in your ends. And then you're completely done with the honeycomb stitch blanket. So I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, um, please leave them down in the comments down below. 
Okay. And don't forget, you can always take a look at the blog post. Um, there's some very detailed photos there on what the stitches look like. So if you need any extra help, those might be really helpful. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe. Thank you so much and have a great day.